nice to see all of you. At least I see two people and, and I see Sean. Hello, Sean. Nice to see you in person. Well, sort of in person. Okay. So today we're going to talk about some activities and tools and interesting things that you can do to teach pronunciation. And um, sometimes people think that pronunciation is not an interesting topic to study. Have you ever heard students who thought that? Who thought, oh, pronunciation. Yeah, sometimes they do. But it can be interesting. So I'm going to show you some interesting things that you can do uh, to help students learn really well, at least I hope. Okay. All right. And if you ever have any questions, go ahead and ask. Okay. Okay. Today, first, I'm going to talk about um, teaching the pronunciation of sounds of segmental features, and then teaching the musical aspects of pronunciation, the um, super segmental features. Now, I wonder when I look at my screen the people there's a row of people on the right side of my screen so that some of the powerpoint is blocked can you see the whole powerpoint or not yeah we can see your powerpoint you can click on that row of people and kind of move it around too as you need okay to. all right good so as long as you go oh, there that is cool okay so all right, so how can we help learners reach their pronunciation goals? We know that everybody has some kind of a goal. Uh, some people want to travel abroad to an English speaking country. Some people want to do business using English. Some people want to pass an IELTS test or a TOEFL test or something that involves good pronounce or that requires good pronunciation and some people just want to survive their english class so that they can get on with their lives so how can goals we have to provide information about how to pronounce sounds about how super segmentals actually work we provide feedback or we provide practice after we introduce a a, a concept practice and then provide feedback so that the students know whether they're doing well or not. And this is a continuous process, not just finished with one step, just like anything in, uh, in, in English teaching or any kind of teaching. So how do we do this? Repeat after me is the, the probably the most common technique that anybody uses, but it's good but it's not enough if we just let students repeat probably they'll just keep making the same mistakes again or or not know what they're doing and they'll probably fall asleep if they have to say ship sheep ship sheep a hundred times right so we need to do more than just teach rules and use mechanical drills we want to use a variety of techniques, sound and sight, movement and meeting, meaningful activities. So we'll talk about some of those. Okay, so pronunciation teaching, as you know, I'm sure, includes individual sounds, the consonants and vowels, also things like syllables and word stress, thought groups and pauses, prominence and intonation, and connected speech. So we'll look at all of those. First sounds. If you're teaching students how to pronounce a new sound, the biggest thing that I can tell you is kiss. No, don't kiss your students, but keep it short and simple. If we talk too much or if we use too many technical terms, the students get bored, they tune us out, or they just don't understand. And if you're explaining how to pronounce a sound, it's not enough to just explain how to, how to say a sound. It's also good to show students how to say the sound, and hopefully in more than one way. And we have to remember that learning pronunciation takes time, and students need to practice a lot so that they can create muscle memory, so that their mouths can just automatically make those sounds. So first of all, we want to model the pronunciation of sounds. Students have to have something to let them know basically what they're supposed to be doing. 
And of course, demonstrations by the teacher are good. We all do that, I'm sure. So if we're teaching the sound, I can say, look at my tongue. Can you see where it is? Okay, and that works for a lot of sounds. For some sounds, it doesn't work quite so well. Like if I say, K, do you see where my tongue is? K, K. No, you don't because it's too far back in my mouth. But for many things, demonstrations by the teachers, teacher are good. Uh, we can also use sagittal section diagrams, like the, which are called SAMI diagrams sometimes. I'm not entirely sure why SAMI and not Bobby or somebody else. But these are good if your students are old enough or cognitively, cognitively developed enough to interpret those and to see, to feel what they mean. So for example, if you look at this blue person on the screen, um, what sound is this person making? What sound is this person making? Okay, I can't hear. I can't hear you. Uh, I think it's no, 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 no. Okay, okay, it could be you. You look at where. Let's see. Oh, can you see my cursor moving? Yes. Okay, good. If you look at this part, no. the tongue is in a pretty good position for mmm. Mm. What else do you see that could tell you that maybe this is not the sound? Mm. Okay, see this part where I'm pointing? Okay. Um, Air. Yeah? Oh, you turned it off mm. again. Okay. It's a mm. Mm sound. No. It's an mm sound? No. It can't be mm because is there any air coming up out of your throat and up into your nose? No, no it's no, locked it's off. Okay. Yes. So, so mm is a good guess, but we know that it's not a nasal sound because this part is, that part is blocked off. But the, so what else could it be? I'll, I'll make it multiple choice. Okay. <laughs> Is this sound A? Mm. Answer B is S. Answer C is P. What do you think? If you think A, hold up one finger. B, hold up two fingers. C, hold up three fingers. So it was mm, S. P. Yes, yes, you're right. Yes, yes, two. Okay, it was B because the, the tongue is very close here, but there's no air coming out here. All right, you guys are good. Okay, what else can we do? Modeling the pronunciation of sounds. There are some really good websites and apps that you can use. Um, have you seen the sounds of speech from the University of Iowa? Yes, we had a chance to. Uh, you had a chance to see that? Good, yeah. So you know it's really good. Um, so you've seen it before. Okay, I won't show it to you again then. But it's good because they have animated sagittal section diagrams that can show how to pronounce different sounds. Um, have you seen this uh, app? This one isn't a website, but it's an app. It's called The Phonetics. And it's kind of similar, except that um, it's more of a see-through style. Let me see if I can show you. Oh, no, I didn't. That didn't work. I wanted to click. Okay, I wanted to show you a video. Um, I think if you right click and then open, uh, open the hyperlink. Oh, you're good. Okay. All right. This is their website and watch our video. Here's their little 30 second video showing some of the things that they can do. Shh. Uh, uh, 
large, large. Okay, so it. Whole words. So it, it's a very cool app. I like it. I like the, the idea like of see through. Uh huh. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It, it's see through. And you can change the picture so that you can see it from different angles. So you can see it from the front. It is very cool. Okay. All right. Let's go back to the PowerPoint. Okay. You can also use my very favorite pronunciation teaching tool. Um, a dental model. You've probably seen something like this in a dentist's office where uh, the, the, yeah, the dentist is showing children how to brush their teeth. Okay, this is really nice because it's, it's pretty accurate. And I can, instead of trying to show with my mouth where, you know, it's dark and small and you can't really see in there. I can make a tongue puppet out of cloth and show how to pronounce a sound. For example, <laughs> or is hard to see in a real person, but I can use the, the tongue puppet to show, or I like to just use my hand because I can control it more accurately. So for example, um, some people have trouble distinguishing between z and j. I could show, okay, when you say z, your tongue is right here and it's not quite touching. Z, so you can go on a long time. When you say j, it, it's tight against here and it pops open, j, j. So you can show the placement, but also the type of movement which you can't do with a sagittal section diagram. Okay, so I recommend these. Sometimes people ask me, where can you get one of these? I got this one on amazon.com. Search for dental model. Okay. <laughs> okay, so that's a really good thing to use. So then you've introduced a sound, you want to practice it. And of course, just like any kind of teaching, you want to start with simple things and then move on to the more difficult things and don't rush it too much. So we want to start with very controlled practice, moving on to guided practice where there's a little more freedom and finally communicative practice. We can use that in pronunciation teaching too. So here's an example of very controlled practice. Basically, I'm giving the students some words or a dialogue and they have to practice saying it. So if I'm practicing er and all sounds, um, I have a dialogue with lots of L and R sounds. Lisa says, I wish I had a driver's license. I'm so tired of taking the bus or asking my friends for a ride, etc." So when the students are practicing these, this dialogue, they might feel like, oh, I'm just, practicing a dialogue. We do that all the time. But this is also pronunciation practice because it has the sounds that you want them to practice. Okay. We can also use minimal pairs. Have you practiced with minimal pairs before? I bet you have. Okay, so you know you can do a lot of things with them. You can practice repeating them. Think, sing, and have the students repeat. You can ask students, which one am I saying? One way is when the students can both see your mouth and hear you. So for example, if I say, which sound am I saying? Put up one finger if it's think and two if it's sink. Are you ready? Are you ready? Yes, you're ready. Okay. Think. Which one? One. Good. Sink. Sink. Think. Okay, good. So you can practice that way. But it's also good sometimes to practice with just sound or just sight. For example, if I'm practicing and you can see my tongue a little bit anyway. What if I do this? Which one am I saying? Think. Good. Sink. 
two. Oh, oh, okay. Sync. Do okay. We can also do it the other way, where the, you can see me, but I'm not actually making any sound. So which sound is this? Good, good. Okay, that makes students focus on the appearance of your mouth. Okay, sink. Which one is that? Sink. Two, think. One. Okay, so different ways they can focus on different things. And then you can have students practice with each other and maybe even write sentences of their own to practice. Like, I think the sink is broken. Okay. If they write the sentences, um, sometimes it's more interesting to practice them than if somebody else wrote them or it's just in a book. Okay, so far so good? Is everybody okay? Good, okay. We could also use info gaps. I'm sure you've practiced with info gaps, information gaps in some aspect. Yes, maybe, yes, or no. Yes, yes, good, okay. So we can use those for pronunciation practice. For example, if I want to practice v and b, I've made no, you can't see me pointing to the screen. All right. I've made some pictures of houses, and we have names of some of the people who live there. And they have b and v sounds. So one student sees part A, and one student sees part B. And they have to ask each other questions to find out um, who lives in which house. For example, if I'm student A, I might say, oh, who lives in number three? And you would answer, Libby Levine. Okay, so I'd have to write that down. Now we can also use communicative practice. And because to be practical, learners need to be able to use pronunciation in real speaking. That's why we need communicative practice too, to build fluency as well as accuracy. So if I can, if I can say uh, light, right one word alone well that's good but then if i later say it in a whole conversation oh it's too dark in here can you turn on the right okay i made a mistake so so we practice and students don't always realize when they're doing communicative practice that it can also be pronunciation practice for example here we have two menus what sounds do you think we're practicing? Oh, are you sleepy? I'm boring you, I'm sorry. Okay, um, what sounds do you think we're practicing here? I, I know, it's okay. <laughs> All right, what sounds are we practicing? Ba, 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 ba. So, Big Vic's Burgers has, you know, kind of reasonably priced things that have, and, and Vivian's fine food has very expensive food. Uh, so uh, I could, labial? Uh-huh. Which one is labial? B or V? Bilabial. Uh, 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 v is bilabial uh, and B uh, is labiodental. Okay. V so is labiodental and B is bilabial. You knew that, right? You knew that. Okay. All right. So I could do lots of different things with these menus. I can uh, just have students practice ordering food. So I'm going into Big Vic's Burgers. I'd like, what would you like? I'd like a, a Vic burger, please, and also some vanilla ice cream. Okay. We can also, since there are two menus and they're kind of different types of places. You can have, bless you, you can have students look at each one and discuss where they want to have lunch. Do they want to go for the cheap place or the expensive place? Pretend, have the students pretend that they're um, the board of directors. They're the boss at one of these restaurants. And Big Vic's Burgers, they haven't been doing very well lately. Their sales are down. So 
what could they add to their menu and what should they take out of the menu? So you can do lots of things with these menus. All right. Okay. Any questions so far? Keep going. Are we okay? Keep going. Okay. All right. So now we have to think about the musical aspects of pronunciation, the super segmental features. Of course, we know that pronunciation is more than just sounds, although sounds are very important. Uh, learners need to know about syllables and word stress, thought groups and pauses, prominence and intonation, connected speech, all of these things. And we can practice these in many ways, not just through repeat, but through using sight, sound, movement, and meaningful activities. There are a lot of things we can do. I'm going to take a drink. Excuse me. Okay. So for example, for syllables and word stress, this isn't always an easy thing to count, just to count syllables, it's hard. Um, look at these words. How many words do you think these syllables have? And how many syllables might some learners think they have? Okay, let's look at each one. Cat, how many syllables? Hold up your fingers. One syllable, good. All right, responsibility. Yeah, six, okay, good, six. Spring, one, good, chocolate. Okay, some people are holding up two fingers, some are holding up three fingers, yeah. Why? What's special about chocolate? Um, maybe we enclose croissant. <laughs> okay, there are different, there are different ways to pronounce it, aren't there, aren't there? If somebody's very careful, they might say chocolate, and that's good. But if they're speaking more quickly and more casually, chocolate. It has two syllables. So sometimes there really is a different number of syllables. So here are the number of syllables that I put down for each word. Would, would any of these, now I don't know what language background your students or your future students might be speaking, but depending on language background, some students are gonna have a hard time telling how many syllables these have, like cat. Okay, we say one syllable. Would any students possibly think it had a different number of syllables? Okay, I'll answer. All right, so some languages have a syllable structure so that there's always a vowel after a consonant. You can't have a consonant at the end of a word. So if a student speaks one of these languages, for example, Japanese, if they've heard this word before, putting it through the filter of Jap, but kato, okay. And they might feel that it has two syllables. Or spring, spring. Has anyone had trouble or your students have had trouble with words that have big consonant clusters? Yes, me too, yeah, yeah. If, if you were a speaker of, yeah, yeah, okay. If you were a speaker, a student speaker of a language that doesn't have consonant clusters, you might be trying to put extra vowels in between those, sil between those consonants to make it easier to say. So instead of spring, I might be thinking of it as spring or spring or, or, or spring or, or something else. And I might think there are more syllables there than there really are. So this isn't intuitively obvious. It's, it's, it's kind of hard. Okay. And chocolate, of course. I mean, the spelling looks like three syllables, but many people say two syllables. So yeah, confusing. So how can we teach word stress by making students focus on um, which syllable is stressed? 
one thing, when you teach new vocabulary words, make sure that you also count syllables and practice the stress patterns. For example, if you're learning the word, what's a good word? Um, ridiculous, okay. So students, we're learning a new word. Ridiculous, everyone say it. Ridiculous, how many syllables does it have? Four syllables, did everyone count four syllables? Good, all right. Which syllable is stressed? This we haven't talked, you know about word stress. Yes, ridiculous, the second one. So when you say that, have the students clap, ridiculous, or tap, ridiculous, or nod, ridiculous, or open their eyes really wide, ridiculous, you know, depending on, yeah, that's good. Um, or you can open and close your hand, ridiculous, or stretch a rubber band. Now, rubber bands, a lot of pronunciation books, yeah, yeah, a lot of, a lot of pronunciation books say stretch a rubber band. If you teach, imagine you, you're teaching elementary school students or junior high school students, what will happen if you give them a rubber band? Yeah, you're shaking your head. No, no. With it, okay, where's my rubber band? I had a rubber band. Where's my rubber band? Yeah, I have big, thick ones. They work better for this. Okay, if I give a, a, a kid a rubber band, they're going to hit their, yeah. So if you don't trust your students, don't give them rubber bands. If you trust them, maybe you teach adults and they're very trustworthy. Uh, ridiculous or potato or asparagus, whatever the word is. So if you don't trust your students with rubber bands, instead you can have them put their hands together and kind of stretch that way, or just put their hands apart without the rubber band to show that that stressed syllable is a little bit longer. Okay. We can also build syllable models. This is so much fun. It's fun for children. It's also fun for adults. This is a way of helping students focus on what the syllable pattern is and um, how many syllables there are. And on the fact that, I've got my, my marbles, on the fact that stressed syllables are bigger and heavier sort of, I mean, figuratively speaking. So I like to get glass shapes like these. I get them at a, a hobby store and give the students some of these. These are for the stressed syllable because they're pretty big. And then where are my unstressed syllables? For the unstressed syllables, and get it out. I get much, much smaller ones so that there's a big contrast between the stressed ones and the unstressed ones. You can also do it, oh, I dropped it. You can also do it with magnets. I brought all my toys, okay. These are, I have big magnets. Oops, and I dropped my small magnets. I'm losing my unstressed syllables. Okay, I have some big magnets and some small ones. So if I want to make a pattern for potato, okay. I know I have how many syllables in potato? Three, okay. So, potato, all right. And I can have students make models like this and compare them with other people. Some students just understand better if they can touch and feel and move things around. So this is a good thing, um, yes. You can also use other things, it doesn't have to be glass pieces or magnets, it could be beans for the small ones and, and balls for the bigger ones, but then balls, because they're round, they roll off the table and they go all over the place. So something that stays in place is a good thing. Okay, all right, do you have any questions? No, okay, so on the screen you see a model for the words teacher and congratulations. You'll notice that in congratulations, this one is a little bit bigger than these two. Why is that one a little bit bigger? 
I'll make a multiple choice. Okay, is it because I didn't have enough small pieces, so I used a bigger one? Is it because that second syllable is more beautiful than the others? Or is it because that syllable has secondary stress? Secondary, secondary, secondary stress. Secondary stress, yes, you're right, okay. Okay, now thought groups. We need, of course, to have thought groups because if I were talking like this and I never stop, my face is going to turn blue and I'm going to, you're never going to understand what I'm saying. So we need thought groups. We need to break up the words that we're saying. So pausing makes us much easier to understand and it makes it easier for us to talk. So for example, in the, uh, the proverb, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Where would I probably pause? Okay. I'll say it very slowly. When we come to the place where I should pause, go like this. Okay, ready? You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. Okay, yeah, the comma is kind of a, uh, a hint. Punctuation usually marks the end of thought groups. And we know that in each thought group, there's usually one prominent word, one word that has more stress than the other words in the, in the thought group. So if I say, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink, two of those words are a little bit louder than the others. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. And usually, well, often, it's the last content word. It's the last word that has important meaning. The, the, not the little grammatical words, but usually a content word like water or drink. Okay? Okay. But we know that prominence can change meaning. So I can say, you can lead a horse to water. Okay, good. What does it mean if you say, you can lead a horse to water? What does that, how does that change it? Not, not me. <laughs> yeah, not yes. me. You can lead a horse to water. I'm not going to do it. No way. You can lead a horse to water. What does that mean? You can mean, lead a horse to water. Uh, mean you have a permission to do this? Yes, yes, you have permission or, or ability. Ability. You, thought you couldn't do it, but I know you can do this, right? Yeah, you can lead a horse to water. Not a donkey. Not a donkey. Not a donkey. Not a donkey. Right? Yeah, especially not a cat. Cats do not want to be led. Okay, you can you can lead a horse to water. What would that mean? You can lead a horse to water, but not not away from water. Yeah, it's not away from. Yeah, once he gets to him away from the water. Okay, so this is important for students to know. And you can use a lot of the same kinds of things to practice prominence that we did with word stress. You can punch the air or tap or stomp your feet or some sort of movement. You can stretch your hands apart. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink or stretch a rubber band if you trust your students. You can nod your head, you can bend your knees, you can jump up, you can do lots of different things. I find myself automatically doing this. I, yeah, but that's just a habit. <laughs> do you love head banging? I love head, head banging like the music. Metal rock? Yes. Not, not really. I like I like Irish folk music, <laughs> but maybe I should try headbanging. <laughs> okay, what's next? Intonation. Everybody loves intonation. Do you love intonation? Definitely. <laughs> okay, intonation is great. So intonation, the up and down melody. And you notice here that the prominent syllable usually also has a change in pitch. So you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink. So the two are very closely connected. 
So there are so many cool ways to practice intonation. You can make a pipe cleaner model. This is a pipe cleaner. You can also, if you don't have a pipe cleaner, you can use string or a strip of paper or anything, but pipe cleaners are nice because you can bend them and they stay in a certain shape. So if I wanted to make a model of, um, you can lead a horse to water, I might say, okay, you can lead, okay, lead goes up a little bit, a horse to water. Then I have, I have a pattern, something like that, okay. Now, as you look at it, it's, it's going from left to right, good, okay. Because to me, it's going, it's going from left to right. Why? Which looks right to you, this way or this way? That one? The other, that way, okay. I'm never sure with, with videos. It, okay, anyway, make sure you do it in the way that will look right to your students. Okay, you can also make a human intonation model. Think of a sentence and choose one student to represent each word or even each syllable. Have them stand up at the front of the room and discuss what the intonation should be and then stand up or, or crouch down so that, um, so that you're acting out the intonation. So if I wanted to say, how are you today? I would have somebody go, how? And the next person, are you? Choose a tall person for the stress level. Today. Okay. You can also conduct an intonation orchestra. You can pretend that you are the conductor of the orchestra. I have a straw here. If you happen to have a real baton, that's good. Um, now, we are all going to conduct an orchestra to say, how are you today? Okay, you ready? Okay, you have a pencil or your or just your hand. Okay. One, two, three. How are you today? Now fine, thank you. Fine, thank you. Okay. So so this it, it's just one more way to kind of focus on intonation. You can also imitate intonation with a kazoo. Oh do you know kazoos? No, it's a oh, I, I forgot my kazoo. Oh my goodness. It's a little musical instrument. You hum into it and you can imitate intonation that way. But if you don't have a kazoo, we can just hum. Let's hum, how are you today? One, two, three. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now fine, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. One nice thing about humming or using a kazoo is that if you're humming, you don't have to think about so many different things at one time. If I'm saying it, how are you today? I have to think about the consonant and the vowel sounds and, and am I moving my mouth right? But if I'm just humming, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, I can talk, concentrate just on intonation. Okay, any questions so far? Okay, now connected speech. This is something that's so hard for learners because we learn individual words, but we don't speak in strings of separate words. I, I, would, I wouldn't say we do not speak in strings of separate words. Nobody talks like that. Instead, it's more like magnets. They're all stuck together. So they feel like one word. We don't speak in strings of separate words. It sounds like one really long word, and that's, that's hard. That's hard for students to catch the sounds. So how can we raise awareness of connected speech? We can make little blocks of wood or plastic or whatever, and put magnets on the end or Velcro or, or something sticky so that we can move them together and show how the, the words are sticking together just like this. We can hold our hands together. For example, if I say, um, don't you like chocolate? Wh what part of that 
would really be showing a lot of connection. If I say, don't you, can you feel how don't you becomes don't you? Yeah. So don't you, don't you like chocolate? Yeah, I love chocolate. Okay. Um, we can also use dictations to help students be more aware of what sounds, what words sound like. For example, I'm going to, let me see what words I wanted to tell you. If you have a piece of paper and a pencil, you can try this. Or if not, just think. Think what words I am saying. Oh, I have it here. I know. Here it is. Okay. I'll say a sentence and you try to write it down or at least think it. Where do you want to have lunch? Where do you want to have lunch? That's number one. Here's number two. Would you like soup or salad with that? Would you like soup or salad with that? Now, were there any parts in those sentences that were hard to hear? Yeah? Okay, I see somebody nodding. Here are the sentences that I said. Where do you want to have lunch? Wanna. So, wanna. Yeah. Yes. wanna. Right, it wasn't want to, it was wanna yeah want. yeah and do you sounded more like dia yeah. do you where want? do you want to have lunch what do you want where do you 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 have where do you, do you want to have lunch it's all blending together and would you like super salad with that super would you super, super. super. Like super, super salad. Did anybody hear super salad? Yeah. Like S U P E R? Yeah, you sound alike. So, yeah, so it's difficult. It's difficult for students. But by making them write it down and then say, oh, I wrote down super, but oh, soup or sounds like super. Oh, wow, big discovery. Okay, <laughs> this can be good. And it can prepare students to hear English spoken in a real way. Sometimes the recordings that come with your textbooks are very careful, aren't they? Where do you want to have lunch? Would you like soup or salad with that? I mean, I don't know about your textbooks, but many textbooks are just very careful. But students have to get used to real English if they want to talk to any real people. Okay, now meaningful communicative activities like shadowing. Shadowing is when you find a short video clip and have the students imitate it and try to act exactly like the speakers in the video. Mm. And it, it's more than just repeat after the dialogue. It's really, it's more like acting, trying to become those characters. And drama and role plays can be good because if you put the sounds and the, the intonation into a real context, a real role play or a real drama, it's more, it's easier to get involved. It's not just like, what is this? This is a pen. You know, that's not terribly exciting. And storytelling and creative projects are really good too. And if you want to have creative pronunciation product, projects, you can have students make videos or, or make an, an, a PowerPoint and narrate it or lots of different things. Um, Adobe Spark is one website or app that lets students make short videos very easily. They can um, choose different pictures that are already in the program or make their own, um, add some words, and then it's very easy to record narration um, when you're using this. For example, my little sample, um, what, sample slide says, I like books. What would we do without them? Now, if I wanted to record that as a student, I would probably make a mistake first. 
I like books. What, oh, no, I got to do it again. I like books. What would we do with? Oh, no, it's not do, it's do. Okay. I like books. So by making mistakes, I'm practicing again and again without feeling like, oh, do I have to say it again? I want to make a good product and a good project so that, you know, my, my friends can see it and not think I sound terrible. So this is a good way to kind of nudge people to practice more. Um, yeah. Another one is, uh, another website where you can make interesting projects is Voki, Voki.com. You can choose um, an avatar. You choose the guy's face or the woman's face. You choose a face. You can add different, um, different clothes, sunglasses, different hairstyles, lots of different things. And then you can record your voice to go with it. Or you can choose, you can type in words and hear a computer animated voice. But of course, that's not so good for, for pronunciation practice. You can do lots of really cool things with this. And both of these websites are, or, or apps are free, but of course you can buy more, more faces and more things if you want to pay, but you can um, do a free version of it. And let me see if I can show you, let's see. That's not it. I want to see if I can show you some things that I made with this. Where is it? It's down here. And these things that you can see now, these are on my website, teachingpronunciation.weebly.com. On the last slide of this presentation, I put that so that you can see what it is. Uh, where is the, oh, there down here. Here, okay. Okay, here's one that I made with, um, Adobe, Adobe, whatever, Adobe Spark. Pronunciation is important. Teachers know that pronunciation is important for our students. But sometimes students think it's boring. We have to help students see that pronunciation is important and interesting. Show them how it will help them communicate better. Show them how it will help them have better job success. Show them how it will help them share their ideas more effectively. To do this, we teach pronunciation using both sound and sight, using movement and communicative activities. This will help our students succeed. Okay, so it's very easy to make one of these and then you can download it as a, um, an MP4 video and keep it in. <clears throat> and look at it again later. Here's one made with Voki. Hello, I've just dyed my hair green to match my eyes. How do you like it? Okay, so that's with a recorded voice. Here's the fake voice though. Hello everybody. This cartoon is speaking with an artificial voice. Does its pronunciation sound natural? What do you no. think? No. No, not really. Yeah. It's not bad, but it's not really, really natural. But if your students put in their own pronunciation, then this can be um, a good practice. Um, here's a little video that I made at with PowerPoint. You know, if you make PowerPoint, you can narrate, you can put narration over the slides. Okay, I'll show you. And then you can export it as a video too. Once there was a cow who wanted to travel. Except I had trouble with this because it put very so long. Up to the other side of the pasture. It put very long pauses between the slides. I don't know. And then she walked back. Uh, 
Okay. So somehow there were some glitches in the timing of that one, but it can be really cool. Um, there's another app called Puppet Pals that's only available for Apple devices, unfortunately, but you can choose backgrounds and choose characters and record your voice. Hello, I'm here to build a barn for you. A barn for me? I'm so happy. Yes, where do you want it? How about over here? Okay. Okay, so there are a lot of other ways that you can um, do really cool things. Those are some ways that we can practice pronunciation. Okay, let's see. Now, it, uh, do you have any questions? I have a question. Yes, sir. So when you teach pronunciation in uh, whatever teaching context that you are mm -hmm. ESL or EFL, um, do uh -huh. you explicitly make time for these activities in your class or do you supplement uh, like more communicative activities? Because sometimes teachers have to get through a certain curriculum and they don't have time to teach pronunciation explicitly. So how do you deal with that problem? You have, one good thing is to find ways to put just a little bit of pronunciation here and there. Because yeah, most people aren't teaching just pronunciation. You have to put so many skills in your class. But for example, when you're teaching new vocabulary, make sure you practice the pronunciation of it. When you're learning grammar, for example, you're learning past tense endings, make sure students know how to pronounce the past tense endings, not just how to write them. When you're learning uh, modals, they're learning should have, would have, could have. Make sure they know that people don't usually say should have, could have. They say shoulda, coulda. Um, when you're doing reading, maybe sometimes have students read out loud and uh, maybe read to each other so that they can listen to each other's pronunciation. So whatever you're doing, kind of keep in the back of your mind. How can I put in just, you know, two minutes of pronunciation here and there? Um, yeah. I like it. It's like yeah. gorilla yeah. pronunciation teaching. Yes, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is gorilla pronunciation teaching. And you kind of pronunciation at once. There are some teaching situations where somebody will say, why are you wasting so much time on this? This is not going to be on the entrance test for high school or for college or whatever. But, but they need it for real life. You know? So kind of sneak it in where you can. Um, oh, I want to show you one more tool. Okay, this. This is a cool thing. And there are different kinds of these things. There's the red one, the blue one. Oops, I've got another, another smaller one. This is a listening tube. Wait, I'm going to use this one because it's smaller and you can see it better. It, it's an, a hollow tube. You put it here and you talk into it. And it makes your voice sound really loud. Mm. So I couldn't talk as loud as I'm talking now into this, or it will hurt my ears, you know, but I can talk very softly. And to me, it sounds loud. And this is good because sometimes you have big classes, right? And if you have, for example, uh, everybody is supposed to be reading a dialogue or reading uh, some sentences to themselves. Hi, I'm almost done. Okay. And, um, what was I saying? This thing. In a, in a big in, class with big lots class. of... Yes. This helps you focus more on what you're saying because you can hear yourself. Mm. And you can't hear the other people so much. And the total volume of sound is quieter because everybody is talking like this. They're not talking mm. like this. If the room is very noisy, I have to talk 
louder and louder and louder to hear myself over the other people. But these are cool. And um, on my website, I've got one page on the one that I'll show you in a second, uh, a one page that has a list of sources of these things. Or, or you can Google uh, Tubaloo. This one, oh, oh, no, Tubaloo, T-O-O, B-A-L-O-O. This one is called a Whispy Reader, W-H-I-S-P-Y Reader. And if you Google it, you'll probably find it. And there are other kinds. Um, you can even make one yourself if you have some PVC pipe like that in a little short piece. And you can get L-shaped fittings and just stick them on the end. Mm -hmm. And it's not as pretty as the, the store-bought ones, but it's easy to make and it's much cheaper than the ones that you buy. So mm -hmm. I like that. You like that. It's, like that. Fun. Yeah. it's fun. It's kind of like talking on an old-fashioned telephone, but... Um, <laughs> Yeah, you could use them for role plays too, I suppose, if you were doing phone calls. <laughs> All right, any other questions? None at all? Zero questions? Let me see if I have any toys that... Okay, we still have time. You want to see a really cool way, I have a balloon, a cool way of demonstrating the difference between voiced and voiceless sounds. I like mm -hmm. this. Okay, I have a balloon. Air comes up from your lungs when you're talking, right? You, <gasps> air comes into your lungs, then you push it up out of your mouth. Okay, so this is going to be like my lung. I just have one today. Okay, I have air in my lungs. Now, imagine that this top part of the balloon is your vocal cords, right? When your vocal cords are loose, the sound is voiceless. It's kind of soft, so it's like this. Okay, that was like a voiceless sound. But when you tighten your vocal cords, you get a voiced sound. Now I'm going to pull this. This is plug your ears if you don't like this sound. Okay. And now voiceless. <laughs> Voice. I love it. I love it. <laughs> I wouldn't give this necessarily to a whole class of students because you, can you imagine that if you have you know 30 people all doing it at once? But if you're showing it. It's good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's see. What else do I have? I think I've seen, oh, you've seen the feathers, right? For aspiration. You've probably done that. No? no. You know, voiceless stops can be puffy and aspirated, or they can be unaspirated. Like if I say, uh, pan, pan, it does, it's at the beginning of a word. a tissue in front of my mouth. Mm. Pan, pan, pan. You can see it moving. But if I say span, 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 it's not moving so much. This is good for speakers of languages where voiceless stops are not aspirated so much, like Spanish or French or mm. um, Hindi or Arabic or, you know, oh, Arabic and but this is good. <clears throat> so if somebody is saying, trying to say pan, P-A-N, but they're not aspirating it enough, the listener might think that they're saying ban, you know, ban. It, they feel like it's a P, but it's coming through the listener's ears as a B, as a B. So if you get them to P, pan, pan really make it puffy, then that's good. All right. Okay. So, how are you doing? Is everybody happy? Definitely. Yeah? Okay. Yeah. 
Great. Okay, oh, excited. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, see, see, pronunciation doesn't have to be boring. And, and, and you can use tools, you can use activities, you can use all kinds of things. So I hope you try these. Definitely. 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 Some great ideas, yes. Good. Good. <laughs> all right. So I think I've come to the end of what I have to say. So can I turn it back over to you? Yeah, thank you so much for coming and doing this special guest lecture. And I, there were tons of great activities. I wrote down a bunch of things that I want to try with my university students here. Oh. And I'm sure that everybody else has some great things that they want to try as well. Okay, great. Okay, and I forgot to show you this last slide. Um, this website, teachingpronunciation.weebly.com. If you go there, you can download this PowerPoint. I don't... I suppose you're not able to download it through um, Zoom, but um, go to this PowerPoint, go to this website, and then under Home, it says Presentations and Workshops, and it's right here, Activities and Tools for Teaching Pronunciation. There's your, your PowerPoint, if you want awesome. to do. And there are some other things from other presentations that I've done in the past. All kinds of great stuff. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. We really, really appreciate it. Thank you for inviting me. It was fun. <laughs> I haven't done a Zoom thing before. This is fun. Okay. All right. So I'll say goodbye now. Thank, Thank you so much, Marla. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.